Hey, thanks for joining me this morning. It's Friday the 11th of March, end of the week, uh, end of a very volatile week, of course, with, with everything that's going on in the world. Inflation numbers out of the US. Yesterday, um, well, inflation keeps climbing, not a surprise, of course, 7.9%. Uh, I'm pretty sure we're going to see um, uh, higher numbers as the, uh, as the months go by. But anyway, um, back to today. It's stock market day for me today. I'm looking at the E-mini S&P weekly chart. Now, we have got a really nice head and shoulders pattern here, and I thought we'd broken that this week. But as you can see from the weekly chart, the market spiked down, uh, but buyers came in. We did not hold below sort of 41.90, which is really where we needed to hold below for me to have this sell signal, signal triggered. But um, despite the fact that we, we, we spiked below that we didn't hold, so it's all down to the weekly close now. And of course, we would have to drop, well, according to where we are now, 42.63. So we really would need to drop sort of 80 points from where we are now. Close below trend line, close below the longer term Fibonacci support around 41.95, 41.85. That would be the sell signal for next week. But of course, doesn't look likely at the moment. Let me go to the weekly chart, to the daily chart, sorry, from the weekly chart. Here we go. Um, so clearly we are in a downtrend now. I was just looking over some of my videos, actually. It was December the 14th when I first predicted that the stock markets would start to tumble. Um, there we go, December the 12th, December the 16th. So it, was, it must have been over this weekend that I was uh, making videos and uh, reporting the fact that I thought the stock market would take a serious tumble. So um, I'm quite, quite proud of that really, because obviously, obviously the prediction did come right when we have dropped quite significantly from um, 4808, which obviously we did go a little bit higher after my prediction, but we did drop, um, well, a good, a good 800 point, a good uh, 600 points or so, didn't we? Um, or more. Anyway, uh, enough of blowing my own trumpet. Where are we now? Well, we are in a bear trend. You can see that from the trend lines that I have on the daily chart. I uh, don't know why the prices are all up there. Let's, let's widen them out a bit. Yeah, we are still, we are in a short-term bear trend. Okay, uh, right from, from January the 1st, really. Uh, so throughout the whole of 2021 so far, the first two and a bit months, we are most definitely trending down. Uh, each peak is lower than the previous peak, and we're getting to the stage now where each low is lower than the previous low. Well, we've got two lows. Let's see where this low takes us, but certainly each peak is um, lower than the previous peak, as you can see in my chart here. So um, we have moving average crossover. We have the 50-day moving average crossing over the 100-day moving average. That was back uh, around the 23rd of February, uh, last week of February, and we're now getting close to a 50-day cross, uh, a 50-day moving average crossing over the 200-day moving average, which would be a further negative signal for the stock markets. So, am I predicting a big collapse this afternoon, a big collapse on Monday, a big collapse next next week? Well, actually, not necessarily, because markets do spend a lot of time trading sideways, and it could be said that markets actually spend more time trading sideways than they do actually moving in one in one direction. Well, stock markets certainly uh, on the up, on on the way up had long periods of consolidation when they just ranged sideways. Uh, nice for scalpers, not so good for investors at that time. So I've now moved on to the four hour chart for the S&P, which basically isolates the bear trend that we're in. Uh, I can put some extra trend lines on here, just joining up this, these two troughs, these two lows. And you can see that the Fibonacci levels are tying in quite nicely uh, down here with the price action giving us a nice resistance level of 42.65, 42.75. If you're a subscriber, then you will probably have that level imprinted in your brain because I've been using it all week and it certainly has acted as a good resistance level. On the four hour chart, we've got the 100 period moving average now down at just around 43.00. So that's also lending extra weight to that level. So uh, that remains a key resistance level for me. Uh, if we break higher, we could race up. The market is so volatile now. I used to have levels that were maybe 10, 15, 20 points apart, no point. We'll easily jump 1%, 2% at the moment with, with, all, with all the um, shenanigans that are going on in the world. So if we were to break up through 4,300 or even 4,295, we could go pretty quickly up to 4,360, 4,380. That for me is a big resistance level. Probably worth trying a short if we get up there. Or re I'll review that next week if we do get up there. Okay, back to the weekly chart for a look at what the downside is uh, like if we do start closing below 4200, 41.80, uh, certainly this week, uh, if, we do, if, we, if we were to do that today. Uh, market can drop very quickly 
uh, to the low 4000s, 40, 20, 40, double O. That's pretty much my first stop. 100 day moving average is in there at sort of in 39, I'm going to call it 39, 30, 39, 20. That would be a reasonable target, but certainly 38, uh, 38, 40, 38, 100 really, because that would confirm completion of my head and shoulders pattern. You can see it on the weekly chart. Let's show you on the daily chart. It's going to be a lot clearer. It's a big one. And so it's very significant. And it is at the top of a major bull run. And it is spread out over several months. Um, you know, uh, I'd call that nine months at least, nine, ten months. It's, it's a major pattern. And I did get very excited when we broke here. But I and I was very surprised then. I mean, this really caught me out. I didn't expect it to go back up and all the way up to this trend line, but we did. Not easy to trade, will remain volatile, these stock markets. You know, there's a lot going on in the world. Um, so you have to really be careful. You have to really take your profit when it's there. And um, if you're on the wrong side of a trade, you've got to get out quickly. Uh, that's always the way, but th these moves are much bigger than they were before. So when you're seeing 2% moves quite quickly, uh, when you see 0.2% moves, you've really got to have your finger on the, on, the, on the stop loss button. Okay, moving swiftly along to the NASDAQ. That's definitely been plunging, as you can see, exactly as, as I've been talking now for a, a while. In fact, the NASDAQ turned before the beginning of this year. Uh, very volatile period here, you might remember that. I did post some videos about that time. Anyway, uh, moving forward to today, as you can see, 13,000, big level. I've talked about that in my report. I've talked about that uh, for, to my subscribers. Big support level. So no surprise at all to see us bounce off 13,025. I had 13,000 down to the 12,900 as my big support level, straight off the 100 day moving average, the blue line, no moving average crossovers on the weekly chart for the NASDAQ, but very good support down there. So that will be the one to watch. And look how aggressively the buyers jumped in at this big support level. Clearly, I'm not the only person that spotted that. Um, right, we, uh, daily chart, uh, again, green, 500 day moving average, um, offering support at that 13,000 level. So again, not a surprise that the buyers came in, but every time the market recovers, we, we get trapped at a lower peak. Now, this is clearly the definition of a bear trend. The trend lines tell us, it, it tell us that you know, each peak is lower than the previous peak and each low is lower than the previous low. So again, clearly NASDAQ in a bear trend. This previous peak here, uh, was at 13,821. If you're a subscriber, you'll know that my level was 13,750 up to 13,850. So we caught that perfectly. And if you're short from that, you're looking good because you're already up about three or 400 uh, ticks. And I would suggest you hold that short. Um, this peak, beautiful, right on the trend line, right on the um, Fibonacci level around 14,300, 14,400. Uh, so again, that level worked perfectly. Now, um, Again, no, no pattern here, but look, 50-day uh, moving average crossing over the 100 and the 200, and now the 100 uh, is starting to turn and head towards the 200-day moving average. So this is all pretty negative for the NASDAQ. Now, the question is, do we start to trade sideways? Because as I said, markets will consolidate. And, we, and we are, when you look at this, we are kind of seeing this sideways action developing in the NASDAQ. And I've got a feeling we might just trade sideways for a while. I think there's been so much um, news out that I think we're now at a stage where we might need to digest it. Same in the S&P. Uh, the, the, the pressure remains to the downside, and if we're going to break in any direction, I think it will be to the downside. But I've got a feeling that we are going to have a period of consolidation in the US stock markets. And that might mean we range from the low at around 13,000 up to my level of sort of 13,750, 13,000. 850. We've got some moving averages on the four hour chart there, which win, which lend extra weight to that resistance area, the 50, the black line, definitely holding the price action on the bounce this time. 100 uh, period moving average is also accelerating to the downside there. So that will be the level to watch. I'm going to leave it at there for now, and then I can update this um, at the beginning of next week. If you like it, please subscribe, please like, please share, do me a favor with that, and please visit my website, Day Trade Ideas. .co.uk